Okay, somebody recently asked me what I thought about Sardinia and its ancient genetics. Um, most of you all probably know that Sardinia is the little island that's off of Italy or Italy's boot. Now, it's not Sicily that's right there. He's fixing to kick it. It's up a little bit like he already kicked one up. A little bit elongated right in there. Did some videos about it here a couple of years ago and whenever a genetic study came out and I wanted to do this one exactly right here and if y'all remember back in April whenever I lost my hard drive I had like 40 things lined up and I even showed them in a couple of videos like all this stuff's coming up well now I got 40 lined up again but this was one of the ones that I was lost and uh, it's from February 23rd of 2020 and uh, so let's look at this this is the, uh, by the way, the ancient DNA from Sardinia reveals changing genetic connectivity across the Mediterranean over 6,000 years. Okay, and this is one of the ancient sites they had there that's, um, see if I can get in good on it. It's a tower, and uh, it's a rounded tower, so it was built all of these cubes, but they were also building it in a circle. People made connections to where there's sacred geometry into it and this, that, and the other, and the way they laid out certain ones and other things and such. But this is elder Neolithic times and something that they had these giant towers. Some of these are said to be three and four or five stories tall at one time, but had been broken down due to earthquakes and stuff in the area from way back when, and also locals pulling some of the stones out for usage and things. But pretty neat there. And you can see this, which it's part of the study that's here. Funny, that almost looks like a hex-shaped stone, and it seems almost to have some writing on it, but now we'll just go past that. This Orcus Teru Nahaji is one of the distinctive Sardinian Bronze Age stone towers dating to the mid to late 2nd millennium B.C. at a site included in the study. So, a new study of the genetic history of Sardinia, a Mediterranean island off the western coast of Italy, tells how the genetic ancestry on the island was relatively stable through the end of the Bronze Age, even as mainland Europe saw new ancestries arrive. The study further details how the island's genetic ancestry became more diverse and interconnected with the Mediterranean starting in the Iron Age, as Phoenician, Punic, which we know that that's colonies from there, and eventually Roman people began arriving to the islands. So at that point they saw different genetics showing up and they were able to go through this. This is the type of study that they saw uh, or, or wanted to see in Egypt whenever they did the ancient graveyard there. And what, instead of finding actually it flip-flopping through like they see somewhat here, it actually stayed a continuity that went all the way through, which was quite a different thing. In fact, some of the same geneticists are hooked up with this study that are hooked up with that. Archaeogenetics is becoming quite a thing and somewhat different, definitely, than just a regular DNA test that people are doing. Oh, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, through the end of the Bronze Age, even as mainland Europe saw new ancestries arrive, and through my other videos, and if y'all have been watching my stuff, we've talked about the waves of Proto-Indo-Europeans and so on that came on and later, you know, Anglo-Saxons and all the type of things that come out about it that led to that. And, of course, the mythologies that come from that and everything that went around with it and who actually were the Picts of the Pixies and all that stuff. Anyhow, I, mean, I think we're totally fine with that. But they also said that they, it became more diverse and interconnected with Mediterranean starting in the Iron Age as Phoenicians and everything, but these are all different variation groups of Caucasians. It's not really that different, but when you see that word diverse nowadays, it really does always catch your ear a little bit, like, why? The research published in Nature Communications analyzed genome-wide DNA data for 70 individuals from more than 20 Sardinian archaeological sites spanning roughly 6,000 years from the Middle Neolithic through the medieval period. No previous study has used genome-wide DNA extracted from the ancient remains to look at the population history of Sardinia. So now too they've gotten new techniques 
that they're able to look at archaic DNA. And, and a lot of the old ones, it looks like that they had it right before, too. But they always thought because of the way it showed up that it must have been tainted and it's got to be somebody attached to it here because the genetics show up the same as some people that are still extant today. Now they've got a huge database and they're able to look through the way genomes and anneals line up and stuff and it ends up showing archaic DNA versus modern DNA. And after so many of these get put into a database, you could even try to fake these guys out and shoot it to them. Well, not just regular DNA, but these guys, and shoot it to them and say, give me a date on that, and they could actually pretty much peg it. And that's because they have so much going on in their database now, and it's just now burgeoning to the point that they might be able to interject some keynotes, and out of it they'll spit boom. But also, who does that connect up to? Well, these people, these people, that, this, and you might even be able to look at through a timeline and say, looks like this is about here. Geneticists have been studying the people of Sardinia for a long time, but we haven't known much about their past, said the senior author, John Novembre, PhD, a leading computational biologist at the University of Chicago, who studies genetic diversity in, a natural, in natural populations. So apparently they had each one and, uh, or others hooked up with it, he looks at this genetic diversity type stuff and you go, well, what would you say about it if you saw it today? Of course. There have been clues that Sardinia has a particularly interesting genetic history and understanding this history could also have relevance to larger questions about the peopling of the Mediterranean. Mediterranean, by the way, means Middle Earth. So for these people that were heralding civilization and going around, it really was a Middle Earth type thing and maybe not quite as diverse as people would like to try to interject in a modern day. An interdisciplinary team was hooked up with this though. The people of Sardinia have long been studied by the geneticists to understand human health. The island has one of the highest rates of people who live to a hundred years or more and its people have higher than average rates of autoimmune disease and disorders such as beta thalassemia. Uh, G6PD deficiency and so on. I remember when I was a kid, remember those yogurt commercials and they used to come out with these people in the Himalayas and these people here and these, here's these Aztec high mountain people and they eat yogurt and they eat yogurt and they're telling you now, there's somebody over 100 years old. They did one about Sardinia too and they showed different people and like, ah, you know, and it's like Greek yogurt or whatever they go, try to go with, off of it and like that might be the key. Anyhow, um, many villages in Sardinia have high levels of relatedness, which makes uncovering the genetics of traits simpler. They're more closely related. In other words, across the island from frequencies of genetic variants offered, often differ from mainland Europe. These factors have made Sardinian a useful place for geneticists like senior author Francisco Cuca from the University of Sassari in Italy to uncover genetic variants that may be linked to disease and aging. So not only are they just looking at it for history standpoint in any way, shape, or form, a lot of these are geneticists that are about immune systems and things like that. And so what they're looking for is, can we see this genetics that's prone to this situation or not prone to this situation? It'll help them, you know, in the future as we try to get more Star Trek type of medicine going on situations that people would know something like this. Yeah. Oh, one day they might be able to fix it, you know, and woo, take this pill and everything. At this point, they would be able to go, well, there's a high instance of so on going on with this. What's the variation? Well, they have this in their V-2, and nobody else has it. Well, how many of them have it? Bing, it shows up a high number and be like, look into that. You know, things along that line. Anyhow. So disease and aging, because these people live quite long or on average. It's not just like that grandma lived to 103, but da, da 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 No, it's like they don't get as much cardiovascular disease and all types of things. <coughs> Pardon me. Contemporary Sardinians represent a reservoir for some variants that are currently very rare in continental Europe. 
These genetic variants are tools we can use to dissect the function of genes and the me mechanisms that are at the basis of genetic diseases. Here's a village here. It looks like some type of Italianish type village in a sectioned land down here. That's just gorgeous rolling hills. Suelo, Sardinia, around which there are several cave archaeological sites that have been excavated by study of the co-authors here from which samples are collected. Sardinia also has a unique archaeological, linguistic, and cultural heritage and has been part of the Mediterranean trade network since the Neolithic Age. Much of the population's genetic ancestry has changed through these times, however, has been unknown. To generate a new perspective of the genetic history of Sardinia, long-term collaborators Kuka and November brought together an interdisciplinary group of geneticists, archaeologists, and ancient DNA experts. A team led by Johannes Krauts, who's become quite famous and in with a group of these guys that do this type of thing, at the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History in the University of Tobogan in Germany. He developed, coordinated the sample, and carried out DNA sequencing with the authentication. Teams led by November and Kuka then analyzed the data and shared the results with the whole group for an interdisciplinary interpretation. We were thrilled to be able to generate such a data set spanning 6,000 years because the relatively ancient DNA from skeletal remains from Sardinia is very challenging, said Cosimo Poth, an archaeogeneticist at the Max Planck Institute and co-author of the first study here. Periods of stability and change. Well, sampling DNA from ancient remains allows scientists to get a snapshot of people living in a specific time and place. Instead of using modern DNA and inferring the past based on assumptions and mathematical models, which, may, which in most cases has no basis in fact. People realized a long time ago because of the genetics and the geographic and the way it changed, you can't turn around and say that like people try to use nowadays and say, you know, oh, well, he must have been Middle Eastern. Well, what you're calling Middle Eastern wasn't necessarily even that same way from not even too long ago. When the team compared the DNA of 70 ancient individuals collected from Sardinia to the DNA of their ancient and modern individuals, then covered two major patterns. First, they saw that Sardinian individuals in the Middle Neolithic period from 4100 BC to 3500 were closely related to people from mainland Europe of the time, so early European hunter-gatherers. Genetic ancestry then maintained relatively stable on the island through at least the end of the Nuragic period all the way until 900 BC. This pattern differs from other regions of mainland Europe which experienced new ancestries entering from people moving across the continent in the Bronze Age. And we have, again, I've done videos about these people who came across the continent and Tuatha Danon and all the different waves that ended up making it and how the mythologies got twisted back on themselves as what they had done together. The results also show the development of Sardinia's distinctive Nurhaji stone towers and culture after which the Nurhaji period is named did not coincide with any detectable new genetic ancestry arriving on the island. We found striking stability in ancestry from the Middle Neolithic through the end of the Nurhaji period in Sardinia, says Joe Marcus, a PhD student in the Department of Human Genetics at University of Chicago and a co-first author also on the paper. Here we can see these early Neolithic Copper Age sites here and you can tell that it's a whole area of burped out granite from long ago and that they have carved off into it this structure. Some people have said that due to these slits in here and so on that it may have uh, had boards running across it and multiple things going on top of it effectively making this a basement or a root cellar situation. But So this is, they're, they're known as Damas du Janus and we talked about Janus and how that hooks up with ancient mythology. So these domes of Janus constructed at the time uh, as one of the sites included in the study. So this is a little bit later perhaps too. Second, the term found evidence that the arrival of different populations across the Mediterranean, first with the Phoenicians originating from the Levant, modern-day Lebanon, and Punix, whose culture centered in Carthage and modern-day Tunisia. And we know that those Phoenicians called themselves Canaan, so there's your Canaanites and so on, 
a lot of modern day maps are starting to blur it out a lot more instead of going point 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 in Carthage but a whole sweeping run at one time then new ancestry continued to appear during the Roman period and further in the medieval period as Sardinia became historically influenced by migration of people from modern-day Italy and Spain. It makes kind of sense after you look through history and stuff, but of course Italy's just right there off the end of the boot. There was surely contact and things, but at that time there was no integration of the people that were there. There are the Etruscans too, which their genetics seem to be very much like. In fact, we're fixing to get into what their genetics are like here in just a moment. We observed clear signs of dynamic periods of contact linking the islands to the rest of the Mediterranean, appearing first in individuals from two Phoenician and Punic sites as early as 500 BC, and then in individuals from Roman and medieval periods, said Harold Ringbauer, PhD, a postdoctoral researcher involved in the computational data analysis at University of Chicago, and a co-first author also on the paper. So they got all these people on the papers and stuff, and they're talking to them about it too, so it's not secondary knowledge. But here we see there are groups that are showing up here, and some of these are just the mtDNA version of it, in other words, or Y, showing up at this time. So there seems to be a grouping of difference, and they've now made the assumption some people are making the leap and saying, well, by this time, the Phoenicians had a colony here too just as uh, well as they had one in Carthage and so on. It wasn't all-encompassing like it was, though, in those points. But it was still here, and their presence is well seen. The group's results help explain similar similarities with DNA from mainland European individuals of the Neolithic and Copper Age, such as Otzi the Iceman, an almost per perfectly preserved 5,300-year-old human discovered in alpine ice in northern Italy in 1991. Well, I did a video about this not too long ago, but also he was mentioned in the King Tut video that goes along with it because of all the genetics that they found in ancient Egypt that actually correspond with this, such as U6, some U5, but also K, and things like that. I believe Otzi the Iceman, correct me if I'm wrong, is KMTDNA and where all that contains, but also it shows you that he was an early European hunter-gatherer before the second wave of the other form of Caucasians that whirled back over. I'm uh, speaking on behalf of Caucasians, I think that we're well aware of this kind of thing that went on where Caucasians mingled with each other from groups and in fact we're okay with it and that connective is what ended up bringing us modern society science all the things came from it hell they can fly and go to space now so it, we're pretty cool with it a lot of people can see something and look at uh, Putin and say well he does look a lot like an ancient thing of Caesar but doesn't that look like Jean-Luc Picard and it's not just the ring of hair necessarily and so on either let's continue Specifically among modern Europeans, Otzi's DNA is most similar to modern-day Sardinians. The new study supports the theory that this is similar remains because Sardinia has less turnover of genetic ancestry over time than mainland Europe did, which experienced a large-scale migrations in the early Bronze Age. And so they've mentioned it again here on the waves that came in from what we call Proto-Indo-Europeans nowadays. And I think, you know, and, and, and they tried to make all this about Cheddar Man or this, that, and the other, and da-da-da, and get people to believe some kind of false belief. In fact, I think the reason I was supposed to look this up, what do I think about Sardinians, is because of that. You look at them nowadays, and he tried to call them swarthy and all these type of things that you hear sometimes out of these people. But what you really are seeing is a Mediterranean-type person. It's a little different. It's like the Basque. And if we say, well, they were the early Europeans that were here before the waves that came back over of other Caucasian-type people, and in fact that early Brana man and so on has blue eyes and everything, it makes a little more sense in how you would see a little bit more dark hair variants versus lighter or fair-haired in certain some of these people. And of course, due to mixing, you get some mix and variants in that. I, I think it's kind of accepted, but... Insights from the past, implications on the present. 
Besides providing new insight into mysteries of the past, studies ancient DNA also has implications for the well-being of present-day humans. The study of Sardinian's population and history establishment, followed by relative isolation, and then the arrival of new sources of diversity provides a new framework for understanding how genetic variants with health implications became more frequent on the island. So like, when did it show up where they seem to show these genetic problems or not, and then looking back and so on and so on, and so it's kind of a health variation of it, trying to look into the studies of that. So there's quite a few different people that are working on this and trying to glean information out of it. For future studies, we want to look more precisely at mutations that we think are involved in disease to see which period they changed in frequency and how quickly they changed. November said that will help us understand the processing acting on these diseases and in turn gain a richer view that may yield insights for human health. So like I'm saying, they're, they're being able to do it. You can see these additional authors here that are all through it. Wolfgang Hawk, I, I recognize a lot of these people's names through the whole thing and uh, well hell you can get down to the bottom and there's David Reich from Harvard and so on all these people are well known about genetic and archaic genetic studies so what we find is ancient Sardinians apparently had boats and they were able to get out to these islands and then the Romans had an early previous integration with other type of people and we're slightly different on a variation on a theme of that. And of course, the Etruscans, you look at their art, and they had a lot of redhead and blondes and so on. Of course, in the art of these people at the time, they're showing red ochre males and pale females, just like they did in Greece, Minoans, uh, the Mitanni people, and of course, Egypt, that we're all familiar with. But their connective is more than that. And just to pin people down to an exact certain genetic isn't really possible because populations today are somewhat mixed in between it but they can see where it derived out of and where that came from and then of course in those populations it's not like well all of a sudden we popped out an r1b1b baby and everybody else changed and all their kids aren't going to be the old one they're all no that's not the way it works and then of course they intergress with each other and so on and that's how you get these variations on a theme and it gets pretty complex they, they can't just go a b c d well in some forms you easily can if we're just looking at well caucasians in this form and then a and c and b got together to form d and da 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 but that's for another video this house is pretty cool here some of the other variations showed are pretty cool now we could go look at it real quick and uh, see here if i can What was this? Did I lose it? I did because it was supposed to have been the next one over. Yeah, now this is on human powered flight. It's another one, though, that went along with it. Why is it the oldest DNA we have from Egypt, Carthage, is European? The oldest DNA samples we have from Egypt and Carthage are both European in origin. So we have a theory. Jehudi Nacht, MTA sequence, from 12th Dynasty, 2100 BC, is showing U5B2B. It's been observed in ancient human remains from there, from Carthage and so on. And the mummy head. Mitochondrial from Carthage, Sammy of the Berbers, and so on. No, this is something else. We're not, sorry for another video. I thought this was the one where they started talking about. Yeah, I know the Pausanians were writing about Carthaginians of Sardinia, said that they were using Libyan and Iberian mercenaries. Maybe a place is good for a source of the mercenaries. No, I'm just making the connection for that. Phoenician Europa abducted by Zeus. Yeah, so you know Europa was actually a Phoenician that was abducted and taken into Europe. Well, what island was she taken to? Oh, well, the, the white bull and stuff was just on these islands that are in Middle Earth. Uh, so, yeah, it was already in Egypt way before 2100 BC, though, as noted. So, 
Sardinia. What do I think about it? Well, I think that it started from early European hunter-gatherers and western hunter-gatherer genetics, like they're saying here, and it held whenever the waves of Proto-Europeans came in, they didn't quite take over that island right there, and it happened later, first with the Phoenicians and then later with Romans. Well, you know how the Phoenicians are hooked up with the Greeks. We know how it went Greek to Roman. Kind of makes sense, and hell, it's just right there. It's hard to believe they took over everything and didn't take over the area that was just right there. So it's why you see it again. Also, there's a connective that people have made with the way that they look and their appearance of their old-fashioned dress that hooks up to bull fighting of Spain and how that goes all the way back to Minoans and stuff and this situation that works it out from a time of Taurus and all this other stuff that it's more esoteric and knowledge and stuff that goes along with it, not necessarily genetics. But up until when he had genetics here recently, that was the type of things that we talked about. It's really pretty much that and pottery shards and this, that, and the other. And you couldn't prove what people were there and who was really closely, closely related and not quite as much. What's funny about that is whenever you looked at it, you go, well, it's hard to tell them apart anyhow. And that's because they were all variations on the same theme. Anyhow, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy, and we'll get on. There's probably going to be another paper to come out of this, one on genetic studies about medicines and this, that, and the other and stuff. If one comes in and fills our bill, I'll let you all know about it, too. Peace.